It is Thursday, May 12. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I am in the home of uh, Billy Graham, a friend in Birmingham, and uh, tomorrow I will present the eulogy for a dear friend of mine, uh, Don Caps. And uh, this is the text of the eulogy. Today we're gathered here to celebrate the life and home going of Donald Caps. His sojourn among us was from Friday, August 9, 1935, until Sunday evening, May 8, 2022. A life dedicated in gratitude to his Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Eighty-seven years of life with us, well lived, as a loving husband, an encouraging father, a loyal friend, a constant effective worker, and a doting grandfather and great-grandfather, a man who delighted in new life and laughed a lot with little people. Funeral celebrations for the redeemed are always a mixture of joy and grief. Uh, we're sad to see loved ones and valued co-workers depart. We feel left alone when someone who has been an integral part of our lives disappears. A terrible vacuum suddenly engulfs us. We feel lost. We feel a loss, uncertainty, and not sure about what to do next. We read and reread uh, Psalm 23, hoping it will give us some comfort. Soon life takes, life makes its demands on us again, and we return to daily tasks, but with a precious stone missing from our treasures. God created us for life. He did not build in much to deal with death and grief, except tears. So we cry, sometimes a lot, and that's okay. Even Jesus knew the shock of death and personal loss. He cried as he stood before the tomb of Lazarus with his sisters Mary and Martha. He wept bitter tears over Jerusalem because he knew the death knell had been sounded for her. Uh, it's a te it is terrible, really terrible, to lose something or someone to the death angel. Death seems terribly unfair. I felt it keenly when I was 45. Uh, the Lord took my, my first wife into his presence at that time. Uh, death often makes no sense to us. Once we learn to live, it seems it's time to die. The assurance of the redeemed is that the Lord will one day do away with death forever. Yet there is a certain joy in knowing that those whose faith is in Jesus, our Redeemer, have passed from death into a life of glory. Twenty years ago, I walked into the front door of North Shelby Church and asked for a men's Sunday school class. Caroline and I had never been in Sunday school class together. Uh, since the day we married, we both were always teaching. So she found a class of younger women, and I was taken directly to Don Capp's old men's class. Annie Lloyd, Don's forever sweetheart, uh, was teaching a ladies' class. Except when I was teaching another class or preaching somewhere else, I never left the old men's class. During the next 15 years, Don and I pretty much co-taught the class. Uh, lots of lonely old men came and went. But there was a small core group. We got to know each other fairly well. It became like a confessional group. Now, we shared about family and work and worries and sometimes old men's hopes and dreams. We shared things. 
Now, the things we did not share on the street, we never thought of it as gossip. It never left our confessional anyway. We sometimes tried to find scripture to help us. Don would often say something like, that is what the Lord says. <clears throat> he never expressed any doubt about what the scripture said. He had an innocent confidence in the absolute truth of God's word. That confidence spilled over in all of his life. He was always confident that uh, in some way, at some time, somehow, the Lord would work it out. His life was a testimony to that firm belief. He, Anna Lloyd, and granddaughter Courtney have been working on his memoirs to become a book one day. As I've read through some of their pages, it's obvious that Don's trust in the Lord and partnership with Annie Lloyd, his forever sweetheart, uh, for 65 years, always kept that confidence alive. Don Caps was an humble man. He gave God and Annie Lloyd credit for all the good stuff that came into his full life. Annie Lloyd was the one human object of his adoration. He never, ever wavered from that devotion, nor lost the sparkle in his eye when she was mentioned. It started the day he first saw her walking in front of his cash register at the grocery store where he was working in it during his teenage years. She was on her way to her job at the department store next door. He declared he fell in love with her at first sight. Now, in their early years together, there were times when they were working four jobs between them to put food on the table and to grow two children. He always credited Anna Lloyd with being the burr that kept him riding high in the saddle and never ever giving up on their dreams. Don loved his family intensely uh, in our class sitting and in private conversations. There was never a doubt about his willingness to sacrifice whatever was necessary to take care of a family member or a friend with difficulty or need. He was concerned with every kind of need since he had felt so many ups and downs in his own life. As a matter of fact, uh, Don may have been a little obsessed with, uh, with food. He wanted everyone to be well fed. He always had the whole class and a few extras uh, out to his, uh, to his favorite a banquet place in uh, Altadena at least once a year. Uh, we were never together socially that he did not want to break bread. He loved the idea expressed in Revelation tw chapter 22 where John saw a river flowing from the throne of God down the main street of New Jerusalem uh, with uh, a forest of the tree of life on either side uh, giving fruit every month. He loved that idea, and the leaves were for the healing of all infirmities. Don always wanted to have something to eat. The family actually, actually gave him the nickname uh, of uh, the food pusher. In reading some of the notes he wrote about his early childhood and adolescent years uh, of almost abject poverty, uh, there were many struggles and difficulties that had to be overcome in order for him to become the witness for Jesus Christ he came to be. John's, Don's pilgrimage to uh, maturity was not unlike the life story of many. As a kid, he had broomsticks uh, tied to the fence with string, and he called them his horses. Uh, he was called Donnie Baby by his mother and three older siblings. He started working before he was 10, cleaning tables at a local eatery, uh, then as a delivery boy and a soda jerk to pay for school lunches. Once while working at the Vulcan, carrying coins and heavy telescope, and the heavy telescope up and down the stairs, the lady at the concession stand offered him a free sardine sandwich. 
He asked her how much a hamburger costs. Uh, and he spent his last quarter to buy the hamburger. Uh, he had as much embarrassment as any man asking for any Lloyd's hand. Like many of us, he had to borrow money to buy the engagement ring. He knew too well the demands of hard work and disappointment. Uh, disappointment of fellow workers and those around him. He understood losing a job, seeing the bankruptcy of his father, going from worker to supervisor at the steel plant, working the long hours he and Anna Lloyd put into their drapery company, and the trips to Montgomery and the hours studying, learning the insurance business. Uh, he knew it all, but as Don reached maturity, he was holding a trump card. He, like Joseph of old, could look back and say with total confidence, whatever has befallen me, bad or good, what may, be, may have been planned or appear accidental, has been in the hands of my Lord. So at the end, no remorse, just peace that goes beyond our understanding. In his memoirs, he wrote about his love and appreciation for every individual member of his family today. He wrote about his hopes and his dreams for the future of the family uh, and his company when he would no longer be present to encourage and applaud. Always, always encouraging them to put their trust and confidence in the Lord's hand, who never fails. Uh, when the new 40,000 square foot Sheffield building was finished and functioning, I went by to speak to Don one day and see the building. He even uh, gave total credit to the Lord for the new building. He took almost an hour to show me every closet, elevator, office, kitchen, dining room, exercise room, shelter space, and even offices provided for future expansion. He introduced me to every person working in the building and had something good to say about everyone, many of whom were family members. Don was quite an example of, Christian, of a Christian gentleman. He openly expressed his attitude of gratitude to the Lord for all the good gifts. He quietly, his quiet humility before the Lord for all his success was evident to those who knew him. He seldom used the generic word God. He always spoke of our Savior as the Lord or our Lord. Uh, there are some Bible verses that remind me of Don and the relationship he shared with many of us. Colossians chapter 3, some verses there. So as those who have been chosen of God... Holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Uh, though he had, according to some, uh, more than his fair share of difficulties and troubles along the way, Don never expressed bitterness nor a vengeful spirit about the difficulties he was dealing with or had encountered in the past. He handled family, church, or business problems with an uncanny grace and confidence that showed that he believed the sovereign Lord is in control. It was not unusual for him to say, we're supposed to help each other. He was more than willing to do that. And only the Lord knows how much his right hand has done that his left hand had not known. His generosity to his church and to individuals will not be known until it is revealed by the Lord. When the church was young, uh, the deacons' meetings were held upstairs at Don's and Anna Lois. Don was more or less senior deacon in those days. Uh, he had been a tither for some time but had started giving more. Uh, he would tell the younger deacons, fellas, when there's a real need, you should give until it hurts. 
and then keep giving until it doesn't hurt anymore. <laughs> if he saw a need in the young church, uh, he would simply go down his list, uh, explain the need, and say, you need to be involved in this. Uh, he taught others to be givers. And I'd love to say, you can't outgive the Lord. He was the eternal good friend to those in need, whether it was a person or a church, family or a stranger. No one knows how many times he quietly helped those in need or those of us going on volunteer mission trips or how often he helped our church meet a financial goal without any fanfare. Uh, there's a verse in Ecclesiastes, which he modeled, uh, says two are better than one because they have good return for their labor. For if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. But woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift him up. Don could always be counted on as a lifter. In our Sunday school class, we all, we all on occasion, expressed with Job our desire for better days when the weight of life was not so heavy. Uh, and in the 29th chapter, Job says, Oh, that I were as in months gone by, as in the days when God watched over me, when his lamp shone over my head, by his light I walked through darkness, as I was in the prime of my days, when the friendship of God was over my tent, when the Almighty was yet with me, and my children were around me. With my steps were bathed in butter, and the rock poured out for me streams of oil. God would smile and say, well, that's just how it is. As members of the last class in the age brackets of our Sunday school curriculum, uh, we often spoke of the end of life and reminded ourselves of Jesus' words in John's gospel. For as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am there you may be also. The Lord who Don loved, has come for him and has taken him into his loving arms. Sunday night, a little after seven, Don went home.